hello students in this video i'm gonna talk about uh, how does nervous tissue cause action um, without uh, wasting our time let's get started so how does nervous tissue cause action to understand this uh, topic we have to understand about uh, one uh, very important concept that is neuromuscular junction so what is neuromuscular junction first so neuromuscular junction from the time we can uh, get the idea that neuromuscular junction mean neuron is there muscle is there and the junction between neuron and muscle so that junction is known as neuromuscular junction neuromuscular if you break the term neuromuscular you can easily understand that it is the point or meeting point of neuron and muscle so if you see in this picture so this is the neuromuscular junction the neuron this yellow color is neuron and, neuro and these are the muscle fibers the neurons are getting attached to these muscle fibers so that all these regions if we change the color here so that point the meeting point of neuron and muscle is called neuromuscular junction so this meeting point of neuron and muscle is known as neuromuscular junction so how does this neuron or neuromuscular junction helps in our uh, action and movement so for this one as we have already know that how neuron transmits messages or information from one part of the body to another part so for causing action uh, our brain sends in signal to our muscle group means if our hands should uh, to be lifted so our brain will send uh, information through this neuron and our muscle group will um, that hand will cause that muscle of our hand will uh, do some actions and with that one we can easily lift our hand in the class 9 also we got that muscle cells or muscle tissue help in movements so due to the, their contraction relaxation contraction and relaxation we can move our body our different parts of our body can be moved with the help of this uh, muscle muscle tissues so once our brain sends the signal or information through these neurons it reaches to the neuromuscular junction and from neuromuscular junction it re it reaches to the muscle and muscle and muscle group causes some actions and that's how our uh, means movement of our body occurs if we see the then the main question how does the muscle uh, tissue or muscle cell causes action we know that uh, the brain is sending the signal and it is reaching to the muscle through this in the neurons and once it reaches to the muscle how does this muscle uh, tissue or muscle cell we can say uh, causing the action means how movement how is the how the muscle cell is helping in the movement let's go for a journey into the muscles of our body So in these uh, two short clips, we have seen <coughs> that the muscle, uh, the muscle group or the muscle tissue have uh, bundles of these muscle fibers. Means uh, the one muscle tissue have different bundles. Means one bunch of bundles are there. So these bundles are nothing but muscle fibers. Means muscle cells. So in the muscle cells, what is there? So in the muscle cells, we have two filaments. That is thin filament and thick filament. If we care. Uh, carefully observe uh, this picture in this one we can see one red and blue red and blue lines are there so this bl blue line that is thin line is known as thin filament and this red line that is thick line is known as thick filament so in the muscle cell or in the muscle fiber so we have thin uh, two types of filaments that is thin filament and thick filament so what is this thin filament and thick filament so thin filament is composed of proteins called actin so in the muscle fiber we have two protein filament one is thin filament and then thin filament is composed of one type of proteins and that protein is called actin so mark here this actin protein while the thick filament is composed of another type of special protein and called this protein as myosin so two special proteins are there in our muscle cells these are actin and myosin this actin and myosin helps in the muscle contraction and relaxation they help in this movement for various body parts so if you see in deep uh, in detail here we can see this this is the myosin filament and this is the actin filament 
so actin and myosin so what happens during the con uh, contraction of our muscles so this is the picture of relaxation stage means when our muscle is in relaxed stage what happens there's myosin and actin remains normal in their position and when our brain sends signal to the uh, muscle group by these neurons so muscle group contracts this muscle muscle contracts and during that contraction what happens this all the muscle fibers present uh, in, uh, inside that muscle group uh, that uh, they have actin and filament so that actin will slide past the myosin and myosin will slide past uh, actin we can also say so means one filament uh, slide past another filament so this myosin myosin filament will slide past the actin filament means this myosin will go like this and it will reach there so here we can see this one filament will slide past another filament and which will ultimately decrease the length of the total muscle fiber and so if the total muscle uh, fiber is this much long so during the contraction that one filament will slide past another one and it will ultimately decrease the total length of the muscle fiber so for the muscle contraction of muscle this movement uh, for this one one theory is there is very important theory say uh, this often and comes in your exam so how does muscle cell change its shape so very important question means muscle cell we have that muscle shape is changing muscle cell is changing the shape that's why our body parts are moving means different body parts are moving because of this muscle cell so sliding filament theory best explains the mechanism of muscle contraction so for muscle contraction we have a theory that is sliding filament theory and that theory explains best that how this muscle uh, contracts so the theory is based on muscle proteins that is sli that slide past each other to generate movement so this theory is based on muscle proteins that is actin and myosin the theory is completely based on muscle proteins actin and myosin and this myosin and actin are sliding past each other to generate movement means they are ultimately uh, decreasing the total length of the mus uh, muscle and ultimately causing the uh, causing the contract causing the contraction of the muscle so according to the theory the myosin that is thick filament of muscle fiber slide the slide past the actin filament that is thin during muscle contraction so during mus muscle contraction what happens the thick filament of, that is myosin filament uh, slide past the actin filament so muscle uh, myosin filament will slide past the actin filament during contraction of the muscle which will ultimately decrease the total length of the muscle fiber filament will slide past the actin filament during contraction of the muscle which will ultimately decrease the total length of the muscle fiber which will which ultimately result in results in the contraction of the total muscle group so all the muscle fibers will decrease uh, the muscle dec the length of the muscle fiber will decrease which will ultimately do what ultimately con means decreasing the length of the total muscle group means all, all the muscle group uh, the length of this muscle group decreases that are that we know as contraction and relaxation means if again it reduces and it retains its original length that is relaxation if it again decreases the length it is contraction so how does this uh, happens this theory we can easily understand means the myosin filament will slide past the actin filament which will ultimately decrease the total length of the muscle fiber and which will ultimately cause, cause the contraction of the total muscle group so this is how the muscle cell changes its shape by change um, by sliding past one uh, one filament over another one so this one uh, is the how does muscle cell change its shape so up to this much i hope clear if you have any confusion any doubt any anything you just ask me